march through monopolistic competition in quick order. All right? Remember, we've done perfect competition, and what happened in perfect competition? In the short run, the company made profits or took losses or made profits or took losses until eventually what happened? It moves to a break-even. So in perfect competition, your break-even occurs when your demand curve becomes tangent to the average total cost curve. But in the short run, this was moving up and down and up and down, and we thought about the average variable cost curve in that short run too. And what did we, what do you remember about that? In the short run, the demand curve can lose money as long as it doesn't drop below the ABC. Okay? And so in that sense, this is the lowest price the firm could take in the short run. Even though they're losing money, their average cost is higher than their price. In the short run, they can lose money as long as they're covering their ABC, their average variable cost. And so we said in the short run then, when you looked at the marginal cost curve, <coughs> this was the short run supply curve for the firm. Does that sound familiar? That's their supply curve. The marginal cost curve, same thing as the supply curve. And in the short run, it's the marginal cost curve all the way down to, a, to the bottom of the ABC. And then we said, in the long run, they have to operate here. And in the longer run, as market conditions change, this would be their supply curve, their longer run supply curve from ATC and above. Just a review. Now, I'm going to draw one quick line on here just to anticipate. When we go into monopolistic competition, the demand curve is no longer perfectly elastic. It's got some slope to it. And in the long run, in the long run, it will still become tangent to the average total cost curve. But because it's got slope to it now, it's going to have to be tangent somewhere up in here, depending on the slope of the curve. So in the long run with monopolistic competition, we're going to see a demand curve that is still tangent and still at break even, but not at the minimum cost. And that's the difference between monopolistic competition and perfect competition. In perfect competition, every company is producing at its lowest possible cost and its maximum possible output. But in monopolistic competition, where you have less competition, the company chooses its price, and it's going to operate up here with a lower level of output and a higher price. And we're going to build that, and we're going to build it pretty quick. You ready? So, monopolistic competition. Same graph we've looked at a million times with the same cost curves. And I'm only going to do the average total cost curve, not the average variable cost curve. And we'll go ahead and put the marginal cost curve in. The difference now is that the demand curve isn't perfectly elastic. It's got some slope to it. It's a negatively sloped demand curve. And as a result of that demand curve, it has a marginal revenue curve that is one half the distance out. It goes out one half as far as the demand curve, because we're using straight line curves. And now that we have a separate marginal revenue curve, our, our search for point alpha is slightly different. Where's alpha up here? Alpha is a point where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, and we can point at it pretty easy, right? Okay. So we know that alpha is here. Let's call that alpha one associated with demand curve one. And alpha tells us what? Quantity. And so this is the quantity we would produce in the first instance. And in order to produce and sell that quantity, we need to know what price to charge. So we read up to the price line, also known as the demand curve. And then we read over to see what price is associated with that and call it price level one. So this, is, is, this is a short run equilibrium. How do I know this is short run? Is it uh, on below the ATC on the marginal cost curve? Not quite. Above it. It's because the demand curve is a tangent to the average total cost curve. In the long run, the demand curve is going to become tangent. What's going on right now? Is this company making money or losing money? Making. How do you know they're making money? Because the price, price is higher. Because price is higher than their average total cost. So they're making profit. In fact. 
equivalent to that little green rectangle. You okay with that? Every company's making profit, so just like in perfect competition, what happens next? Why? What will happen to the industry? More suppliers, more sellers will move into the industry. And we're not going to show the, the industry supply here. We're going to say, what happens to this company when they have more competition, when there's more sellers? Fewer buyers. They have fewer buyers. What's the other term I use for that? They will have a decrease in their market share. Their share of the market will be decreased because other sellers are taking away some of their customers. And so when they have fewer buyers, their demand curve shifts in. Let's shift it way in here. Here's the new demand curve, number two. And here's the new marginal revenue curve. Number two. And here's the new point alpha, alpha two. Everybody following that with me? How's life, by the way? It's a tremendous decrease in demand. And so this is still the best quantity to produce, Q2. And in order to do that, we would set a price up here of price two. And how are we doing? We're losing money because the price of this output, the price, is less than the average cost. And so the red rectangle represents a loss. But what will happen in the industry now? Some of the sellers will go broke. They'll get out of business. And as more sellers die off, the company that remains, what happens for them? They pick up the customers. They pick up some of their customers back, and the demand curve shifts back out. Much like perfect competition, demand is increasing and decreasing, increasing and decreasing, based on whether you're making profits and attracting competition, or taking losses and losing, you know, people dying out of the industry. And then what happens in the long run? Where does that demand curve settle in the long run? What's the key word? Tangent. Tangent. And break even. Both terms correct. That in the long run, the demand curve is going to wind up, whatever its slope, it's going to wind up tangent to the average cost curve with its own marginal revenue curve, what's the best again? Here's our new alpha, marginal cost, marginal revenue, call it alpha three, quantity three, and price three, where'd it go? I drew it out of line here, didn't I? I guess it did. But you'll wind up with a point of tangency up here where the firm is breaking even. So in the long run, there's no profits, economic profits, no losses, everybody's happy. Uh, fat and happy and living life. And the key words for long run and monopolistic competition are tangent and break even. Is that okay? That's pretty quick and easy. Or at least quick and dirty. Maybe not easy. All right? That's monopolistic competition. What's the primary characteristic of monopolistic competition? How does it differ from perfect competition? The goods. What about the goods? They're no longer homogeneous. There is, in fact, key term, product differentiation. That every seller is allowed to differentiate his product from everybody else's in whatever way he can. Paint it a different color, give it a different warranty, call it a different model number, have a nice sexy looking model in front of it. I don't care. What makes yours different than the rest? <laughs> Does Santa Fe College differentiate itself from other colleges? How? Gateway to the Gators. Gateway to the Gators. Gateway to the University of Florida. That, for sure, is, is one of our significant, significant differentiators. What? When you go out looking for a job, graduated college, looking for a job, are you now engaged as a seller in a monopolistically competitive market? Are most of the other people out there selling themselves, looking for a job, are they all pretty much... Kind of like you, or maybe with some differentiation. How do you differentiate yourself from the other thousands of people out there looking for a job? Your resume. Your resume is a, maybe a way to open the door, but what's better than a resume? Yourself. Referrals. Somebody who's well connected, who knows you well, and thinks a great deal of you, who can speak to you. Who then you give him your resume, he passes it on. Who did that? John Spence, okay. How do you differentiate yourself? Do you differentiate yourself from your, by your appearance? Absolutely. And it can work for you as well as against you. Do you differentiate yourself by your presentation?
by the experiences and stuff that you can talk about either on your resume, in your cover letter, or just generally in your past. How can you convince me? It's a sales job, isn't it? How can you convince me that I'm better off to invest $30,000, $50,000 a year in you than I am in him or her or whoever? How can you do that? That's all marketing. And so monopolistic competition is sort of the economic theory behind all the studies in marketing, the whole career field of marketing. It's about a highly competitive industry where everybody's trying to be a little bit better or a little bit different than everybody else. Welcome to the human race. All right? That's monopolistic competition. Questions, comments?